This is Better Business Coach, session number four. This is the Better Business Coach Podcast, your source for critical sales training, proven education, and actionable worksheets, all downloadable for immediate use. We work hard so you don't have to. Now your host, the rapid growth guy himself, Matthew Pollard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Better Business Coach. My name is Matthew Pollard, and as always, I will be your rapid growth guy. Now, if you haven't already, and I know I've mentioned this in all my other sessions, please subscribe to both the video and audio podcasts on iTunes or any other form of media so that you do not miss a thing. This session is specifically designed to help you understand what the major coaching surprises you will have in your first few months of coaching. See, until I started coaching for my first few months, I didn't understand just how deep the rabbit hole went. See, I always thought that business owners and staff wanted for the same thing, the most successful, profitable, and productive business possible so they could all grow within the organization to success. Turns out that some business owners actually prefer to work just enough so that they can go on holidays or they want a business that works while they travel. Other business owners want to be able to get out of work as quickly as possible so they can spend more time with their family. Some business owners don't want any stress at all, so want to ensure that they continue at a consistent and comfortable pace as they grow and make sure that they get a similar number of customers and never more so that they can maintain their current business operations. Staff, on the other hand, some like a place where they can grow and get promotions and get pay rises and enjoy the success that the business obtains and takes pride in that success. Other people just want to enjoy their work nine to five and go home and not have anything to worry about. They just want to do a task and then leave. So as a coach, you can't bring any of your preconceived ideas about what a person should or shouldn't think about any specific business or any specific new thing that you're going to implement. You have to analyze each person as an individual about what your coaching is going to be able to provide them and what obstacles you may face. And with business owners and staff, we've got some wonderful templates that we'll release in the future sessions that'll help you better understand that. Next, it's important to understand that people adapt and perceive things differently. See, In neurolinguistic programming, and a lot of people may have had this training, and if so, I apologize, I'm going to re-talk about some absolute basics. However, in the study of neurolinguistic programming, we learn that people are presented with 2 million bits of information every single second. And we can only process, depending on the study that you read, some people say 236, other people say just over 300, but really, not that many. And the best way it's been explained to me, if you can imagine getting 2 million matchsticks given to you in your hands every second and having to just pick the couple of hundred that you want to actually hold on to, it's almost impossible. And the way our brain does it, which is a major supercomputer, is it processes it by delete, distorting, and generalizing all of the information through our beliefs our values, and our past experiences to perceive what we actually perceive. So the first thing I want you to understand is that when you implement something into a business, somebody may not react as you expect them to because based on their delete, distort, and generalize or their values, beliefs, and past experiences, they may perceive you doing something completely opposite. A good example of that is When you want to implement a new system, a person that works for that organization may have seen that happen in one of their previous organizations and as a result got retrenched. So you want to make sure before you do anything that everybody's on the same page. Also, people adapt to things differently. So it may be that a person isn't upset about the new system that's getting implemented, they just take longer to learn it. So you want to make sure that you don't have a, everybody's going to take this long to learn something, or when I'm with a client, it takes me an hour to run this session. Every single person adapts to things differently and perceives things differently, and you need to allow for that. Next, we need to understand that many business owners are lonely at the top. I know for myself, 
I got promoted ridiculously within the first 12 months of working for an organization. I ended up the state manager of the head office of the largest telecommunications sales company in the country. And all of a sudden, I only had a few colleagues I could talk to. Very shortly after that, I opened up my own business, my first business, and I had one business partner. And that was all I could communicate with. It was lonely, and I was lucky enough to have a business partner. What you will learn is many of these people that you speak to will be by themselves. They will be lonely. And sometimes, as a coach, just acting interested in what they do and listening to them unload their stresses, their worries, is such a major thing. And a lot of people will pay you just to talk. So sometimes you will feel that their talking is stopping you from providing the service that you know you can provide. And that's fine. Sometimes we need to put barriers or curb the conversation to helping them get those aha moments. However, other times we need to allow them the opportunity to talk because sometimes that's all they need. You'll also find that sometimes you may be the first person that is actually interested in their stories and what they're doing, and maybe the first person that's actually proud of them and says that they've done a good job. See, a lot of people that are business owners have their wives, their husbands, their family members, their friends telling them how risky it is to be in small business. And you may be the first person that tells them that what they're doing is correct, and that can be special enough for people to continue coaching with you. The next one is that people display a lot of behaviors that limit them achieving success. One is that people will sometimes think they already know everything and there's nothing that you can do to help. And I often say to people that everybody is never too old to learn something about doing something better. It's something that nobody can disagree with. However, you've got to unfreeze somebody. And if you don't know the Lewin's model of change, I would suggest that you have a look at that. What that is, is it's necessary to unfreeze a customer before you can change anything. Then you can refreeze them into new habits. But if they think they know everything, they're not going to take on board anything that you say. And it's important that you unfreeze them first. Next, is that they're always worried that people are ripping them off. And this can limit them achieving because none of the managers feel like they are given the empowerment to make decisions. They're always worried that their boss is looking over their shoulder and we need to work on helping them get away from that. And the last one is that business owners quite frequently think that only they can do it. And this is a limiting behavior that stops them achieving. Until I started coaching, I never believed that business owners could get in their way so much. And I think that you'll find the first few months of coaching absolutely eye-opening in that regard. The next one is that business owners tend to be very, very time poor. However, a lot of that time is wasted. The 80-20 rule is a big thing that I like to work with with clients. And that is that generally most business owners spend about 80% of their time being unproductive and 20% of time actually being productive. It also works with their customers. Generally, they get 80% of their revenue or 80% of their profit from 20% of their customers. And the other 80% of their customers, they only receive 20% of their profit from and could be considered time wasting. And sometimes they're even losing on those people as a result of the amount of time it takes to look after those clients. I've actually got a book coming out in a few months that discusses time management and the strategies to use in order to be better at this. And I'll share that with you at the appropriate time as it gets released. The last one is a lot of people will resist change because they're scared of new systems in a business when they are worried that they may not understand it. They're scared that they may not be good enough to understand a new system and that they could potentially look bad. So what we need to be aware of is that sometimes when you think you're introducing something that could really, really help the business and you get almost rejection, even from the business owner, it could be that they're just scared of change. They like the way it is. Finally, many business owners work in their business, not on their business. See, before I owned my own business or before I started coaching, I always believed that most business owners had a grand plan of where they were going and they managed their staff to help them get to that goal. 
However, they worked in their business sometimes. However, they always kept a mindful eye over where they were going, their strategy, and what they were doing. What I've learned since business coaching and what surprised me in the first few months, which you know was a long time ago now, but what I learned was that most business owners tend to leave a functional skill or a profession that they did in their previous employment and get a business open that allows them to provide that same service where they have to do all of the other skills as well, which means that they have to work a lot, lot harder. And they get in their own way by not engaging staff or trusting staff to do things and saying that they can only do it. And as a result, all they do is they end up working in their own business. Robert Kiyosaki wrote Cash Flow Quadrant, and it's a great book for you to read if you haven't read it. But he continually talks about people that have functional skills that work in their business, not on their business, as being an S, not a B. They're self-employed, and it's basically they own a job as opposed to a business, because a business truly makes the money even when they're not there. And if you've not read E-Myth, this will give you some other great stories on people that are stuck in their business. So again, this was only a very general thing to be ready for. And to give you a basic summary, we'll give you templates and things to be able to help you break down these barriers with people. But I just didn't want you to go into your first coaching clients being surprised that they're getting in their way so much. So that seven again was business owners and their staff wanting different things, people adapting to things differently and perceiving things differently, business owners being lonely at the top and sometimes just wanting to share stories and vent and have somebody that tells them that they're doing a good job, people that display behaviors that limit themselves such as I know everything, my staff are trying to rip me off and only I can do it. Business owners being time poor, even though that time may not be productive time. People resisting change in the business, like new systems, because they're worried about it making them look bad or they're not adapting to it well enough. And finally, many business owners that actually are just looking for a job or currently just have a job. They're working in their business, not on their business. So when you go out and coach, don't be surprised by any of this. These are all things that I learned within my first period of time as a business coach. And I hope by giving you these things up front, you'll expect them and you'll be prepared for them. And once I provide you the templates, the ideology and the training that you'll need, you'll be able to help your clients overcome them. Again, thank you very much for your time today. And if you haven't already, please provide a review on iTunes about what you think about this podcast and the star rating that you think this podcast is worthy. I'd really appreciate any comments that you have, both positive or negative. I just wanna see how you guys think I'm doing and I wanna hear about any success stories that you've got. You'll also be able to find the session notes and all of the downloadable worksheets for the sessions to come on matthewpollard.guru or betterbusinesscoachpodcast.com. Thanks again for your time, and I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Better Business Coach Podcast. Head over to matthewpollard.guru for links, recaps, and any downloadable templates mentioned in this and every show. Also, if you've not already rated our new podcast in iTunes, we'd love your support. Simply leave a review and the star rating you think worthy. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thank you in advance, and see you next time.